Today, I'm going to present you uh, work that is that has been done in collaboration with Sabir University, uh, CNAM, and Paris Dauphine, and my industrial uh, partner that is uh, Caisse de in France. Uh, my sincere congrats for, for the organization of this uh, conference. Really, really professional. Well done. Okay, uh, I would like to introduce you to the problem of cross-chain swap among different blockchains. So we have different blockchains that has to swap assets, so cryptocurrency, for instance, uh, among each other. Uh, I will show you some preliminary results and uh, model through game theoretical notions and uh, analysis of the equilibria. So we, for this work, we started from scratch, basically uh, redefining the, so think about what is a general swap problem and then uh, trying to define what is a blockchain swap protocol. And we did it step by step. So first of all, what is a swap problem? Is a problem that involves assets, owners, and some a method that uh, has to be used to exchange these two. So it's a ownership transaction that change. So what we have here is that we can define the swap problem uh, thanks to a tuple of asset owners and subjective map that uh, denotes that uh, with the original configuration that we want and, and that we have and the desired one, B star that we want. And uh, what we have is that the cardinality of the set of assets is greater with respect to the owner's one because we don't want share ownership of an asset. So we want owners to have more assets, but not uh, to share the ownership of a single asset, for instance. Okay, uh, we can define, so we have now the first configuration, the original one and the desired one that we want, the assets involved, the owners, the owners involved, but what we need is a measure of the happiness of the two, of the, of the owners, evidently, the swap participants, and we need a classical utility function that is monotonic, and of course, the, hap the player is happier if he has more asset with respect to having less. So what is uh, a protocol that involves uh, cross-chain exchange uh, is, a uh, is a sequence. So we have a sequence of transfer with the asset symbols, owners involved, and a map that is this XK that uh, tell us who is going to own what. And of course, it has been done in sequence. So we have uh, an index that in this case is the K that runs from one to T, uh, identifying these, the exchange that are that takes place. So the ownership change meant uh, during the time. And of course, what we have is, is that a certain step, we have a transfer of an object or multiple object, but the other stays stately. So uh, the, at time K, if the asset is not involved, we stay with the configuration we had in K minus one. An example, so this is an example with, uh, so five assets, three owners, and we can see the initial and the and com uh, desired configuration with through this graphical representation that we have. So we can, from our configuration, we can go to the graphical ones, but we cannot do the opposite. And we can see that, for instance, in this case, the swap take place, the exchange take place in three steps. So uh, we have uh, one and two, so A and C, the change owners uh, at step one, then we have D and then we have B and E. Okay, now we have uh, defined uh, an exchange protocol, a decentralized exchange protocol. What we want to define is a swap protocol. So for us, a swap is a situation where I can, okay, you can see from the camera, I'm standing here with two hands and I give an object and I receive another one from the other side. What we don't want to have is the passing of an object during the swap. So I can take one and I give to the first person on the row. We want a swap. So one time I, ha I give one and I receive one without passing it. And to define that, simply we have to simply add the constraints that AK is a partition of the set of, uh, of asset A. In this case, we have um, swap protocol. Then we have to take the swap protocol and contextualize it in uh, the blockchain system. And of course, we have to deal with the problem of all or nothing atomicity. So what we want to have is that 
any commitment, so any actual transfer of the property of an object should be conditioned on the correct asset locking. So what we need to, go, to, ask the, uh, to lock the asset before uh, transferring the ownership because we want to preserve this all or not guarantee the all or nothing atomicity property. And what it says, the property is also, is also that fact that consequently to failures in the asset locking, the initial situation must be restored. And once an asset transfer is committed, all the other transfers have to commit it too. So we have to guarantee these, true, uh, these three uh, things. And in order to do that, we need to separate the two phases. So the locking phases that, that uh, is, uh, matches the publishing phases. So we have this uh, transfer that is locked and has to be published on the blockchain because you know that contract needs to be validated and published on the blockchain. And then what we have to do is to commit. So remove the locker, unlock the transfer, and transfer the ownership of an object. And these two phases are se sequential. So first the publishing one, and then the commitment one. And the commitment one is co coincide with the decentralized blockchain swap protocol that we have presented before. And the publishing one is a simple sequence uh, establishing the, the publisher and uh, the transfer that has to be uh, that we want to, to have. So preliminary results, we were able to uh, formalize the concept of commitment requirements. So the fact that uh, we want to, we can have um, a transfer, so a commitment only if the, uh, the publishing phase has been executed in a correct manner. And of course, commitment requirement is a necessary condition for blockchain swap to be atomic. Second easy trivial result is the fact that if along the sequence there is a transfer that doesn't occur in a correct manner, so doesn't realize, we have a situation where there is someone that gain and someone that lose. So the fact the, the first I, the first commitment says that there is someone that is happier because has an asset more, and someone that the second I, uh, the second point said that okay, there is someone that is sad because he loses an asset. So we have a situation in this way and this proposition will be used for, for the final result. And then we, uh, we identify the fact that each player plays a role in the commitment phase. So the transfer has to be unlocked and there is someone that does that. And this someone is the decider that is established through this decision faction F that can decide whether to unlock or not this uh, transfer. And of course, it can be as well participants. So in the asset O, there you can see function F, or it can be an external actor that stays in, lies in this asset T, and we'll see F, uh, later what it can do. So let's take a case where F is effective, that means the owner that has to unlock the commitment is the one that has to receive the asset, the object. So of course, in this case, let me go just, let me jump a slide. In this case, we can see that if F is effective, so we have a configuration in this way, everyone is incentivized to follow. So everyone, so following the protocol, sorry, that is specified as action one, is a subgame perfect equilibrium. That is, of course, a refinement of the Nash equilibrium. That means that, of course, if I have to decide whether to take an asset, I go. There is no rational intention to deviate. And of course, that's first. The first was the first result for a class of, uh, of protocol that is called sequential publishing and commitment protocols. And we used uh, an extensive game to uh, model that. And of course, the, the, the strategies were follow or not to follow. But it's not always the, the case. We can have uh, other protocols. And we'll see the last example. So first example of sequential protocol is the one proposed by Nolan and generalized by Harley. And in this case, we can see that our formalization uh, actually 
give um, actually uh, formalize and, uh, and characterize this protocol, we can see from J and K that we have two steps. So it's sequential. And the results that I presented so far, action one, so following the protocol, is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. But let's take another protocol, for example, a, a concurrence NAT protocols where the the two the commitment phase takes place in just one step, and we have an, a central authority T, so an external one that has to decide whether to unlock or not the uh, the the transfer so to allow the commitment and of course we can see in this case that everything takes place in one step and we can see from the index j and k that is one and that ftk is t so the the actor who decides is actually an external one lies in lying in t and for this case we were able to prove that action one so following the protocols is a nash equilibrium so thanks for your attention. Uh, I, I had to, so tr through this formalization, we were able to identify each type of existing uh, swap protocol among blockchains, so cross-chain swap protocol. Uh, we are working on this topic uh, for next publication and I'm here for, for answering eventual question. Thanks. <laughs>